when I when I teach in training programs, I generally go through the first two years of awareness through movement material, and I I use it. I refer and I go back to it again. So some of the stuff I think you've probably had. Yes, you've done these lessons before. So the, the the thing this morning you didn't you didn't have before, probably this particular baby rolling crawling lesson. <laughs> but this lesson of making this what what Moshe calls equalizing the flexors and the extensors, <clears throat> yeah, you've done before. And again, looking at it differently and looking at just take, taking apart moment by moment by moment. The first time you go through it, you spend so much time just figuring out how you make the, this long, that long, do this, do that. But you don't necessarily notice what, what takes place moment by moment as you make the movement. But until we can make these moment by moment distinctions, how are we going to practice functional integration? So... You'll see. We'll 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 carry on just a little bit longer, and then we'll start to put this into something on the table for you, based on what we did last week as well. Okay. All right. Any questions or observations or? No, we're all good. All right. Please come and lie on your mat again. <clears throat> Please place your right arm about an angle somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees away from your from your body. So just downward, not upward. Downward and not upward. Yes. <clears throat> Please begin to slide your left arm in an arc overhead. Start with your legs long, if comfortable. If not, don't worry about it. Just you know, just slide your your right arm is is at an arc it, with your excuse me, your hand downward at about thirty degrees, thirty five, forty five degrees away from yourself. Close, yeah. Not not ninety degrees. Where's forty five degrees? That's it. And as you slide your hand in the arc overhead. So you begin to roll a little bit as if to roll. And the moment your hand comes overhead, watch what happens to your left shoulder. In what direction does your left hand move? In what direction does your right hand move? The moment that you come over the top, what takes place with your right shoulder and your right arm? And you watch whether your arm slides away from you or whether it begins to come up. Does your right shoulder begin to lift upwards towards you, or does your right shoulder begin to turn away? Some of you will find, whether they want it or not, your right arm wants to lift. Your right arm comes away, comes outward, away from you. And others will find that your arm slides downwards toward, your, toward yourself. You just watch and notice. Leave that for a moment and change so that your left arm is at about 45 degrees. Your left arm is at 45, not 90 degrees. 45. 35. Somewhere. Slide your right arm overhead. 
And as soon as your arm comes overhead and you begin to make the movement, in what direction does your left shoulder move? In what direction does your left hand move? <clears throat> Leave it rest. Place your left hand behind your head your right arm at about 35 or 30 degrees or 40 degrees, something like that. Your left hand behind your head, your right arm to, to the side. And please begin to slide with your hand behind your head, please slide your head a little to the right and back. It means that your hand slides, but it means that your elbow, your right elbow, what does it do? What does your right elbow do if you're gonna slide and turn your head to the right? With your left hand behind your head, slide your head to the right. What does now what does it mean? It means to slide your head and turn your head as if you're going to look down your right arm. As if you're going to turn and lift your head to look down the length of your right arm. And you watch as you make the movement of lifting your head, whether you begin to pick your arm up and slide it toward yourself, your right arm, or whether your arm slides away. Make it once in such a way that as you lift your head, that you slide your shoulder up, back, and under you, under your head. And one time, make it so that your shoulder and arm slide away so that it's as if your hand is going to slide away. You lift your head as you slide your hand away. But it's not such a situation where your arm, your right arm goes upwards. It's such a way that your right arm keeps sliding directly down the length of your arm, which means if it's a 35 degrees, it goes right down the 35 degree line. Wherever the degree is, it's not that you change the height of it. Very nice. Please leave it and rest. Please change to the other side for a moment. Rest for a moment and then change to the other side. <clears throat> as your right hand behind your head, and you slide your head to the left, 
as if to turn and lift your head to look down along the length of your left arm. It means that your head will actually lift through space a little bit so that you can turn and turn your face and turn your eyes and turn your head towards to look down the length of your of your left arm. And again, as you make this movement, as you turn your head to the left, you notice what does your left arm do? Does your left arm have the tendency to want to lift your shoulder to lift up towards your head? Or does it slide away? You might find I could see people that was very clear on the when they went to the right, their right arm slid easily away. And yet on this side, they find that their arm wants to come to them. Yes, like you, you want your left arm, your left elbow as you start this movement. Go ahead, start the movement. That's not what you were doing a moment ago. That's okay. Just just notice that and you've changed this side. This side's different for you on this side than with your right with your right arm. Now you've changed. But a moment ago you were making the movement and your arm was sliding. Oh, you were seeing what you did. So we alternate. One time you draw your arm to you, and one time you slide your arm away. As you draw your arm to you, it's as if you're going to slide it back and underneath your head. And one time you make it so that you slide it away from you. It's maintaining the angle. So as I make the movement, I come here and I draw my arm to me, or I make the movement so that my arm slides away. Uh huh. Please place both hands behind your head. Interlace your fingers if you wish. And please begin to slide your head a little to the right and a little to the left. Slide your head a little to the right and a little to the left. And as you slide a little bit further to the right, you slide to the point that your left, excuse me, your right elbow eventually comes toward the floor. And then you begin to lift yourself up and over your right elbow a little bit. And as you make the movement to slide a little to the left, you wait and you find out where it is that you place your shoulder and your elbow on the ground. And then when your elbow touches the ground, you come up and lift over your left elbow. And it's a very interesting thing as you go to the right and as you go to the left, where it is that you go to. And again, as you cross this imaginary line, this point of not right and not left, you can watch this whole thing that you studied with your abdomen as you go. Because some of you will find that where you go on the right and where you go on the left and where you place your elbow on the ground, it's not symmetrical. It's interesting to watch. 
Some people will roll and their arm stops and they roll around that point and other people will find that their arm as you're rolling to the right, for example, you might find that your right arm keeps rolling and turning and turning as if to come all the way to your knees. And that if you go to the left, maybe the left arm stops and then you lift up over a place. But you can sense whether it takes effort to lift over it. Leave it and rest. Please place your right arm at about 45 or 35 or 40 degrees somewhere there. And please cross your left arm in an angle somewhere down towards your right, the right side of your pelvis. So it crosses you. Your left arm crosses you as if you're on an angle towards your hip joint or the top of your pelvis. Very slowly, please, with your nose directed to the ceiling for, for a little bit of time. Slide your head to the right. Slide your right arm downward. And as if your left arm, as if someone is holding your left arm and inviting you to, they're inviting you to sit up. As if they're holding your left arm, your left arm reaches away from you and come back. And you find within yourself, as you make this movement, at what point in time do you notice the involvement of your right knee? It's as if someone reaches, if I was here with Glenn and someone, and where would I take him? Would I take him across himself? Would I take him down along himself? Would I have him reach down along his pelvis? Where would I, so each time you make the movement, play with a different angle of reaching down across yourself as if to bring yourself to sitting. So you. As you make the movement, at what moment as you make the movement of lengthening as if someone's reaching and you're lifting your head and you're coming up and over your right elbow, at what moment does your right knee begin to participate? At what moment does your left knee begin to participate? I just saw some kind of flashing light in one of those bags over there. Huh, interesting. The moment that you start to come over your right elbow, where does your chin move? Where do your eyes move? Fold your right knee, then fold your left. Fold. Fold. Sense when it folds, when one folds and then the other.
it means to fold in such a way that your right elbow comes to rest near your right hip. It means that you bring your hip and your knee to your elbow. The weight of your torso comes closer and closer underneath you so that the weight of your legs and the weight of your pelvis serves to lift your head without any sense of having to make any pressure against your right elbow or your left hand. It means that as you make this movement, your right elbow comes right along your right leg. Please make this movement of rolling in such a way that you lift yourself continuously away from the floor. As you roll over yourself, where you place your right elbow, where you place it, this movement can be done without any change in the pressure in your right elbow. You don't need to lean on your elbow. The movement continuously, sequentially continues to move in such a way that your right leg, your head, your chest, everything, your chest and head come over your knee as your knee comes underneath you. The left arm can, it's like someone is lifting you, as if someone is coming along. If I was to come here and I was to give her, now you're pulling, don't pull. Bring your elbow close, turn your elbow, turn, that's it. Where, that's it, that's nice. Now, I'm over here, hi there. I'm still over here, ah, you're pulling. Wait, hi, wait, look at me. Keep coming to toe toward me, keep coming. What an interesting idea. Now turn your head down and away and not too far. Find the advantage that you have of where you can find the support. Touch your head to the ground. That's right. Now come back and here I am. That's right. How will you find? That's right. The ability to lower yourself to lift yourself, to continually find how to roll over, not pressing, that's right, without lifting your head prematurely. And yet every single moment, every single moment of this movement, every single, every single moment, this movement can be made. This movement can be made. Lift, move, wait. This movement can be made in such a way that you would come up directly up this way and back down. Put your put your elbow close. That's right. Bend your knee. That's right. She could come up this way. You don't need to turn over there. You can keep the whole. That's it. You wouldn't turn away if there was a big dog with a slobbering mouth. <laughs> now go back down again slowly through this plane, through exactly this plane. That's right. That's right. Now your head can find the place. And now you can come through this plane. That's right. Every single plane, every plane can be made in such a way that this whole, that she can lift through any any point. That's right. Make the movement to 
and then begin to switch this movement across over yourself. Place your left hand on the angle outward, your right hand across yourself, and begin to play with coming up. Falling means that at some point in time, you don't know where you are. And so you can watch whether moment by moment by moment, you find the support under yourself, through yourself, in such a way that moment by moment, there's no point that you fall. The moment you come up to sit, as you come to the left side, your right leg comes back. Your right knee rests inside the arch of your left foot. As you go back down, you lower yourself in such a way that if you needed to, you could see your hand at every moment. No matter what the angle is. that you could follow your head and your hand precisely. That's right. Every single point of the movement, your head can follow your hand. Your hand can lead your head. Your head and hand can be connected together. There's a minimal way in which you roll over one elbow and the other. In other words, you find where to place your elbow so that you can roll up and over and up and over without any particular sense that you need to have any particular extra pressure, any push against the floor. Well, just leave it there for a few moments and go up and up and over a few times. Now very slowly, please roll down to the left, bring your hands up and over the top, roll up to the right. This is the left. Roll up your hands and roll over yourself and come up on one side and come up and over yourself on the other side. So with your hands long and you arc both hands up and over yourself. And then you bring one hand up and over the top and then you make the movement and you come up but watch, there's a moment for many of you where you jerk yourself across the floor. There's a moment for you there where you use momentum to get across. There's a moment for you in which you have to hold your breath just momentarily to get up. What's that? Okay. Sit up. Sit up here. Just put your both knees behind to the side. That's it. Give me your hand. Slowly lower yourself. Oh, so that's right. Just lower yourself to your left elbow. Where would you put your? Now you fell. So find another place for your elbow. That's right. Oh, okay. Now find an even more comfortable place for your elbow. Very nice. Now slowly lower yourself over yourself and begin to roll yourself back over yourself. Great, and come back up. Wonderful. <laughs> now as you roll from side to side, there may be a moment on one side you can sense that you fold together clearly and on the other side as you roll 
You open and then fold. Look to see. Find out. Find out. Which side is it that you fold on easily? Which side is it that for the moment you open and then fold? Do you fold and fold or do you fold Now let's make a criteria. Here's the front of the room. Sit up, turn your legs one way or the other. And throughout the entire time of the of the making the movement that your eyes stay to the front of the room. Here's the front of the room. You make this movement of going down across yourself and coming up. And the entire time of the lesson, you keep your eyes to the front of the room. So you can see where all of a sudden shoulders go in funny ways that make it hard for you to keep your eyes and your head to the front of the room. If your arm goes up and away from you, how do you keep your head to the front of the room? Leave it. We can go do more of this. It's enough. It's enough for our purposes. Can you bring the tables? Can, can I have a table in the middle so we can look at something and then you can begin to look at something? Roll your pads up. <laughs> 